One of the most sought after and beloved destinations of early Pokemon games comes only when the main game is already finished, the story is complete, and your trusty team of Pokemon are in top fighting form. I'm of course talking about the post-game battle facilities that have been in Pokemon in some form since Pokemon Crystal even. Every game afterwards has had some form of this challenge, these grandiose facilities that inspire players to grind and team build and keep rising up as trainers. And when you consider the actual content, the massive hype surrounding them, and that added pinch of nostalgia, the Battle Frontier is absolutely the most popular of these facilities. And it's right to be. They are truly awesome places that the games need to return to. But I want to make a case today for another facility, one that I think rivals the Frontier with what it offers, and how it gives the player opportunities and choices that the others don't. I'm talking about Colosseum and XD's massive mount battle. So today, let's go on a journey where we explore what I can consider the secret best battle facility in Pokemon. Welcome to the peak of Pokemon battling. If you've never played the GameCube titles before, they combine the way that the normal mainline games feature a massive collectathon and narrative elements with a proper 3D battle simulator. They're a lot grittier and rougher around the edges, introducing these brutal shadow Pokemon and then having you capture them from enemy trainers. There's really nothing quite like them in the entire franchise, and they've never returned to the format again unless you count the more recent titles on the Switch, and that's not something that I'm going to complain about again, okay? In these brilliant GameCube games lies the absolutely imposing Mount Battle. Mount Battle is this massive volcano featured in both games that has been modified into this gigantic tiered battle challenge for trainers. It features one 100 floors with a trainer on each floor that you have to beat to progress. And at a brief glance, this place seems pretty familiar, you know, maybe an awful lot like the regular old battle tower that no one even seems to like. But there are two things that Mount Battle does that beat out any other battle challenge in Pokemon and really make it stand apart. This challenge offers you two incredible things, progress and control. These two ideas have a relationship that I think will become more clear as we go along, but let's start with the way that it gives you progress so that we can also cover some more of the details about the place before we move into those larger ideas. Because this facility offers progress to the player in a way that no other battle facility does. For one, it has to be one of the most accessible of these facilities in Pokemon. I actually played on it as a kid because it's incorporated into the main story of both games. So as part of their normal progression, give you just the smallest taste of the climb by having you go up to floor 10 as a part of the normal story. So we get this taste of how this works, and they teach us that in this climb, battles are much like those found around the rest of the game. You get XP, you can level up, but most importantly, you get checkpoints. Every 10 floors you make it is a new place that you can start from. For me, this is beauty, this is grace. I am surrounded by beauty when I am allowed to make actual progress on a journey like this. Because the one gripe that I have with the battle frontiers and the battle towers and the various ways that they've done it over the years is the streak system. The only thing that gets awarded is winning numerous battles in a row. You can't lose it all if you want to get anywhere. I get it, and skill issue, obviously. But I do eventually put the Game Boy down after one too many times losing in the 20th round when I needed to get to 21. And I can appreciate that that offers its own type of progress. You get better and better and your streaks will get better. But Mount Battle offers something here much more tangible, something much more finite. And I say all of that, but have no doubt that it's still hard. The teams get tougher and some really strong Pokemon start showing up and we've got to rise up with them. Every time you try it, you might make it a little bit farther. You might make it to the next checkpoint. You beat that trainer that was giving your team a really tough time. It's not just the abstract idea of your skill level improving. You're making physical, real progress. And that is so important in a challenge. Starting from scratch after a burn like that, feels awful. And so you're working your way up without having to start over, you're growing as you go, and you're really getting somewhere. And that is where I'd like to tie in that other idea I mentioned, control. Because while progress is available to you, it's ultimately up to you how hard you want to make the journey. And unlike in other games, Mount Battle will actually meet you on that journey. These games are willing to reward a job well done. Mount Battle is a worthy challenge in the regular confines of XD or Colosseum story, but absolutely, you can make it easier for yourself by overleveling or simply bringing in an overpowered team. However, you can also make it way harder. And what Mount Battle does here feels so rare to me as a longtime Pokemon player, because I've done plenty of Nuzlocks or other challenge mode type runs with the difficulty cranked up to 11, but the only additional reward was really just satisfaction or hype. Essentially nothing. 
for being real. And this is Gen 3, so you know it's real. If you beat the basic challenge, the rewards are generally pretty measly. Coliseum, you get these coupons, which can be used to buy items. And in XD, you also get the coupons, but some pretty cool TMs along the way. The shops do have some pretty cool and even exclusive items, some of which not found in any other Gen 3 game. But I want something more, something incredible for how hard I worked on this journey. But that's just the beginning. The true reward of Mount Battle shatters expectations. And in order to get that true reward, you need to do the game's true challenge. You as a player are given complete agency in this situation, and if you want to play harder, you get better rewards. On top of this, the game offers two modes for completion. There's a standard story mode, which is the main mode that I've been talking about. You play in the world of the narrative, you get to take Pokemon in and out, and you can level up and train as you go. The alternative, battle mode, is essentially a battle tower. All levels are set to either 100 or whatever the highest level on the player's party is. So it's also a tried and true battle tower, which are generally pretty mid, but hey, it's here. Okay, okay, so then what is the true challenge and what are the true rewards? Well, it requires you to bring in a single team of Pokemon, no swapping, and then win all 100 battles in a row. This is a tried and true gauntlet. The trainers will always have the same Pokemon and be in the same order, so you can try and build the perfect team for the job. Clearing the mountain under these circumstances will grant you the following lovely rewards. In Colosseum, if you fulfill all these requirements, the reward is just Ho-Oh. Just a straight Ho-Oh. The legendary bird, ultra rare Ho-Oh. This is the only Ho-Oh that can be caught outside of events in Gen 3, and also is just an incredible Pokemon. There's something about this sprite that has always spoken to me. This feels like a championship-worthy award. This isn't that piece of printer paper that oh, Professor yeah. Oak gives you that says, A good job, you did it. This is the one and only legendary phoenix that rises from the ashes, and now it's under my watch. I will add that in this game specifically, this also requires you to purify every shadow Pokemon in the game before doing the challenge in battle mode with the team you use during the story. So it also kind of doubles as a 100% completion bonus. So it is a little bit more lengthy than just doing the tower. In XD, you don't have to go through those additional requirements, and the reward is still pretty cool, but it's fittingly a little less grand. Only a little though, don't don't worry too much. Upon completion of the true challenge, you get to take your pick of the Johto starters, each outfitted with their respective type's ultimate move and one of their egg moves, so they are fairly unique. These three were much rarer in Gen 3 than they are now, and a good chunk of the Johto Pokemon were because Gen 2 couldn't get transferred up to Gen 3, and it was either this or completing the Pokedex and Emerald. And come on, maybe in a later video when I'm feeling more pleasant. And if you really have some time on your hands, you can run it three times to get all three starters. They don't even force you to pick one, you just gotta be willing to do it again. And then both games also equip your winning team with Earth Ribbons if you manage the run as well. So there's your little badge saying that you did it too. Ribbons do make me really happy because these Pokemon can be transferred up to the current generation where the accomplishment can still be appreciated, and I'm a pretty nostalgic person, so it's a nice touch. And on the other side of all that, if your team includes any legendaries, and you know, your secret's safe with me if it does, but this makes things a little bit easier, and the game will dock the amount of coupons that you get for every legendary that you have. I think this is pretty fair. They're not outright banned like they are at some facilities, but they know that that makes it easier, and that's okay. Fun is fun. We're just going up the tower, we're doing it at our own pace. And this all culminates for a stage that's willing to let you grow inside of it. Progress in a long gauntlet like this is so important for making a challenge that can be fun for everyone. Players of all skills. You don't need it. You don't have to use it. You have control over the type of challenge you're in for, and the game is willing to respect that skill. Mount Battle is a really special place. It's the only one of these battle tower type places that gets integrated into the main story, allows you to train inside of it, and has a finite ending. Across all Pokemon games, this one's an all-timer that I hope you can experience at least once. Folks, I've been Droomish. This has been the peak of Pokemon battles. Thanks a lot if you made it this far. I love covering Gen 3 and Pokemon under this ultra-focused light. If you liked it and you want to help me keep doing what I'm doing, give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We got big stuff coming. The response in the last video was absolutely nutso. We're going to keep rocking and rolling. See you next time. Drimish out.